Mitchell here with Ari, and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. This week, we're on episode 220, and we're asking, how can you get to know your characters? Before we dive into the topic, we have a quick announcement. We are moving away from Patreon and over to Coffee. Uh, in a nutshell, we both think Coffee is a better platform to use, so that's why we're making the switch. So how can you get to know your characters? One of the best ways to improve the character development within your stories is to ensure you know your characters inside and out. Sure, nine times out of ten, the characters will write themselves. However, there's still much you can do to get to know your characters before or during their adventures. And we've talked about character profiles before on the show, so you can use these exercises to help build those profiles or simply get more character-focused practice in for your writing. So my first tip for getting to know your characters is to write them outside of their main story or novel. And you can utilize writing prompts, throw them in a short story with or without other characters you've created. And this just helps you get to know them on a different level because you're throwing them into a brand new situation. And again, you can use the cast of characters from your main novel and see how they interact with those characters for your main novel, or you could just throw them into a random scenario and, you know, see where that takes you. That way, not only are you practicing your writing, but you will learn a lot about your character and develop them further so that when you go back to the main novel, you can write them kind of with a fresh mind in a way. Oh yeah, totally. I, I love throwing my characters into scenarios that I just run in my head about how they are. They are te technically lab rats. And they will run those mazes <laughs> until I know what they're like. Um, that's actually what I do with, or what I did with my Dark Heart series. Um, when I first started writing it, I wrote book one. And I had a very clear idea of what was going on. I say that as someone who has completely trashed that idea and rewritten book one completely differently. However, over the years, I was writing um, lots and lots of different scenes and ideas scenes never chapters never novels always scenes and I put my main characters through the ringer I used these scenes to find out like how the characters would grow because that's how you find out what your characters are like it's how they develop because at the beginning of a novel or the beginning of a series a character will be a certain way and unless you're writing a static character which I do not recommend especially for the main character your character will change depending on their experiences, what they go through, the people they hang out with, you know, all of that changes a character. So the more situations you put them in, the more instances you throw at them and, and, and the more other characters, different characters they get to meet will affect how they change and how they evolve as characters. And I found it really helpful and also bad. And I'll explain why. I found it helpful to write my characters going through so many different like events and meeting new characters that I wanted to bring in later on in the series. The only problem was by the time I went back to book one, I felt like my character had developed very intensely and it's like I had to bring her right back to the beginning. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not the sort of growth we're doing yet. Right now, you don't know any of this stuff. But that is a small bad point. And that's only because I went a little bit crazy and wrote like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of scenes and to be honest, most of that will end up in the series. Um, but yeah, 100%, write them as short stories. And I, I know we've talked about this, but these little short stories, these snippets, these scenes are perfect for bonus features. They're perfect for like deleted scenes that you can give to your readers. Uh, so yeah, it, it's never wasted time writing them ever. I know some people are like, I've got so much to do. I've got a whole novel to write. I don't have time to be writing side, um, side adventures. It's like, yes, you do. A few little side adventures, a few little scenes. They really do work. <laughs> I got to be honest. I like totally agree with you on that, that sometimes you can kind of overdevelop them in all of these short stories because I probably have more short stories written with George and Lila than I do for like the actual novel series. I And the amount of short stories I have with them, I could probably put together in a collection, which I do plan to do at some point because there are characters that I know won't be introduced until later in the series, but they're in the short stories. So I know once, you know, a couple of the first books are out, then I can like self-publish a collection of short stories with these characters and say, this takes place in between books like three and four or something like that. And it's just something extra, but it's, it's a lot of fun 
and it's like cathartic too, because especially when you get stuck on that novel and you hit writer's block, just start writing a short story with these characters. And it kind of, not only does it bring new ideas, but it also develops the characters, which is kind of what we're going for here. Exactly. And if you write in short stories or scenes, it's always the juicy scene. It's always the action scene or some intensity that's really good. Because if you're anything like us, we get a bit bored of some of the, the slower scenes and they are still important. You know, the books need a pacing where sometimes you'll have slower bits and sometimes you'll need like more intense bits. But sometimes that gets a little dull. And especially if you're a little bit like us where we're kind of like, mm, our brains go off in one direction. It's good to just write those little scenes because it's all like, yay, action. Also, just backtracking for a second, I really like how you described them as lab rats earlier, because it's true. That's pretty much what they are. I mean, we create characters and throw them into all these horrific situations, and then we're just like, get yourself out of it. See what happens. <laughs> but something else that I like to do to help develop my characters further is to put myself in their shoes. And basically what I mean by that is to just like take online quizzes as them. Like, pretend that you are your character and see how they would react in certain everyday situations, how they would wake up in the morning and just... I, I grew up in the 90s. I wasted many a time online taking BuzzFeed quizzes and things like that. And there are so many different personality tests that if you take those as your characters, you'll learn a lot more about them. Again, don't take them as yourself. I'm pretty sure some of our characters are somewhat loosely based off of you because I think just subconsciously we all put a little bit of ourselves into our characters but just become one with your main character or side character or whoever you're trying to develop further and take on like quizzes as them and I feel like there's something else that you can do to put yourself in their shoes but online quizzes is the only thing I can think of so I'm sticking with that I'm older than Rachel so I remember when it was quizzes in magazines <laughs> Never mind online. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. it's like Cosmo quizzes and things like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. I used to have like those like preteen magazines, like J14 yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, I don't, oh I that don't must know. be the posh one. It used to be just 17. Now it's J14, J17. That's yeah. It, yeah. I don't, I don't know. There oh. were like a couple of others, but I can't remember the name of them. They had like the Disney Channel celebrities in them and stuff. <laughs> yeah. oh, we spent money on that crap. Oh. We did, we did, but I just wanted the posters. <laughs> yes, right in the middle, especially if you got like two or three I don't know, set of stickers. Or yes, something. but I anyway. always hated when they came like double sided. Yeah, how it's do you like choose which boat. side to hang up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, see, this is this is the suffering we had growing up as eighties and nineties kids. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, no. first world uh, problems. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Um, okay, my next one is is weird because I don't do this, but I have heard lots of people have good thoughts about this, so I'm going to share it. And that is you interview your characters. So you pretend that you're some sort of weird journalist or just a regular journalist. <laughs> and you interview your characters, you ask them questions. And let's be honest, there are tons of questions online. As Rachel said, there's all these quizzes. You can interview them in a way that works for your story, right? So like Rachel writes mystery, in which case you could have the police detective interviewing her characters or you could have a journalist saying, oh, I believe you saw the murder and interviewing the side character that witnessed something dodgy happening. And then you could do little things like that and then write down like how the character acted because it's not just what they say, it's how they react. You know, do they, do they look around very quickly? Do they lie? Because that's what, you know, they feel like, well, I need to show off or something. There's so much you can do with that. And I think, I might be wrong, but I think there are actually character interview questions on some websites. I remember seeing one once, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was one of these platforms like um, Novel Factory or something, where they had a list of questions you could ask your characters. I think there was like 400 questions, um, which is a little much in my eyes. So maybe pick and choose the questions you want to ask when you interview your characters. Or even interview them as if they were movie stars of the own TV show or something. Um, but yeah, I've heard people say that and it works well. Again, I don't think I would want to sit and do that with my characters because I'd probably get obsessive and want to do it on all of them. And then it, it, I just not write the story, which is um yeah, I don't need I don't need help procrastinating. So 
I was just going to say, we don't really need another distraction, but you can disguise it as, you know, character development practice. Uh, because I like interviewing my characters. I, I'll admit I haven't done it in a really long time, but back in the day, I used to. Um, and that was partly because I created character profiles. And whatever episode number we talked about character profiles in... I don't remember, but we did mention in that episode where you can have a section of just like basic generic questions and uh, information, tidbits that you could write down for your characters, like their favorite food, their favorite color, where they would like to go on a ideal vacation spot or something like that. Um, but that's kind of what we mean by interview them. You can, it kind of goes hand in hand with the character profiles and for real, if you Google character interview questions, you will get a crap ton of stuff. Even just go on Pinterest and people will, they'll just have like the images of a list of questions. And, uh, or I actually really like your idea with the mystery of, like that would be something really cool to do when the novel is over, is pretend I'm a journalist and interview George and Lila and like, Walk me through how you solved this crime or whatever. That's actually a really good idea. Thanks for helping me procrastinate more. <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. But no, that's it. I think it, I think it would work. Uh, I, I could actually see that being at the back of a novel. You know, like in the bonus section, looks like uh, you know the interview pieces with what how they respond. Especially because if you interviewed both of them together, you'd have their different reactions because of their personalities are so different you'd have it like that i would read that i would read that so yes yeah, stick it at the end well it would show the dynamic between the two characters as well which i mean you've seen through the novel but it like you'll see it in a different light that's actually really cool i'll have to write that down but finally the other thing that you can do which is less exciting than taking online quizzes and interviewing them you can just simply write their origin story because i mean a lot of novels, the main character, the first novel is kind of like their origin story, but what happened before that novel? How did they become this person to begin with? If you write like somewhat of a prequel to your novel without actually being in a prequel to the, the plot of your novel, just showcase your character, how they grew up and, you know, different life experience that they've had and how they overcame certain things. Uh, just how did they come to be the person that they are at the start of your novel? It's really weird. I remember um, I bought a book once and I didn't know it was book six <laughs> of a series. And I read it. And obviously there was a lot of things where I'm like, huh? And then I realized it was book six. Another one of these, but they didn't have the number on. And I didn't, I don't think they even had a thing in the middle. That, you know, I'm sorry, a thing at the front that said, you know, list all the books. So I assumed it was a standalone book. I got it really cheap. And I remember reading it. And there was a mention of this character having a scar. And it was like, oh, this scar that's, you know, that happened where somebody did this. And, I and then when I found out it was book one, I'm like, oh, right. So it's going to get mentioned. And I went back and I read the whole series, went back to book one. And obviously it was like, oh, right. Now I'm getting an understanding of the characters and how they got to this point. That scar was never mentioned. And I, I, I remember that. I mean, this was, you're talking like 12, 13 years ago. And I still, I'm sat there going, I would have been happy to read a novella that walked me through the situation where that character got that specific scar. I have always wanted to, and I honestly thought it was, it must be, oh, it must be in book one or book two or something. Nope, never. So yeah, origin stories. You'll be surprised how many people would like to see how a character became the character. I mean, look at it with the Disney stuff where you're seeing um, like a lot of the villain stuff. You know, they're doing the Cruella de Vil and they're doing Maleficent and it's like how they became bad or suppose if you're watching Maleficent, she didn't actually become bad. But you, you're watching that, you're seeing how they are before the main character, whoever it is in the, you know, Sleeping Beauty or whatever. Wait, is that right? Is it Sleeping Beauty? <laughs> I, can't remember the, I can't remember the Disney movies. Yeah, I think it's Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent. And that, so you have her origin story, which adds a whole new dimension, not only to the villain character, but to the, the main character as well. And it's like, yeah, origin stories are brilliant. I mean, again, Marvel, keep bringing out origin stories of characters because people want to know how it started. And that is a good way of of seeing, yes, we're going back, we're not going forward about how they develop, but it's a really good foundation 
to do that. So yeah, I love I love me a good origin story. It doesn't have to be a full novel. It could be a few scenes. It could be a novella. It could be a a bonus. You know, hell, a flash fiction. Don't care, but it's a good idea. I concur. Yeah, I was just going to say, you don't even have to publish it. Even just do a bonus thing for your newsletter or your, your you know, your website, whatever. That scar, it sounds like it's a feature of that character. <laughs> like the, the author just threw it in there to like differentiate that character from everybody else. <laughs> it's like, don't worry about it. It's a feature. All right. So with all of that said, um, I think... Yeah, I think we covered pretty well how you can get to know your characters. You can obviously write them outside of the main story and novel. You can put yourself in their shoes, interview them, just let them marinate inside your mind. Sounds a bit weird, but I'm going with it. And write their origin story. And, you know, all of this will help you practice character development and just writing in general. And it'll be a nice break from the main novel, especially if you're feeling stuck. So now we're going to turn it over to you guys. How do you get to know your characters? Is there anything that you do that we didn't discuss in the episode? Let us know your answers in the comments so we can chat about it. And remember, we release a new episode every Wednesday. Next week, we're discussing the benefits of a positive read. To ensure you don't miss that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out. As always, thank you for listening to the Merry Writer podcast. We'll see you guys next week. This podcast is brought to you by Scribbled Notes. Our handwriting is awful. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.